we have a lot of scriptures that we have heard that are in scripture and we have a lot of phrases that we have heard that are not in scripture. The danger is, is we end up building faith blocks on these foundational truths that are not biblical. And when life happens, those truths begin to slide and they take our faith with it because they're not in the Bible. This morning, um, I've been preparing this. I want to I want to do this first because I always forget. So they're going to put up the um, application questions ahead of time because I always forget and I write them out and then I never give them to you. So I want to put them up first. So I want you to be able to take a screenshot of this. If you're online at home, you can take a picture of it. I just got the new iPhone 12. I want you to pray for my humility because I look down on everybody else who doesn't have one. And uh, so I've been praying. I, I saw somebody the other day with an iPhone 8, and I was like, how could you? Uh, so just, just take a, and if you had a Samsung, I didn't even talk to him. I just, I just felt like, I just, I felt betrayed. Um, so we're going to have the application questions up so that you can um, take a picture of them. Let me get out your way. And uh, you can take a picture of them, and um, they'll be helpful to you. I've been working on this for... Uh, uh, probably two weeks, and um, at first this message is going to start off really slow and boring, maybe, and then it's going to pick up. But I need you to kind of get it because this is really an important one because it, it matters. It really matters um, that you get it right the first time. Now I want you to put up my work cited. So I want you to kind of, for those that I that are, we have ministers in our church and we want them to kind of see what work goes into it. Uh, how many of y'all had to do work cited in school and for grades? And I used to just skip that because it was like five points off and I could never get the formula right, MLA or whatever, APA formula. I just, I, every paper I started, I knew I was at a 95, so it was all good. Uh, unless I had somebody do it for me. Praise God, judge your mama. Um, so look, uh, <laughs> I graduated, that's all that matters. No one asked you in an interview, did you have someone do yet? No, I'm just, um, so let put the work side up there so that they can see that. Um, these are all the resources that we navigated. Hopefully it'll be up there in a moment, praise God. Uh, anyway, it'll be up there soon. Um, these are all the resources that navigated in ensure that um, we just kind of got this one done the right way. I don't know, it, technology has issues, but they have it. But we'll get it out for you or we'll send it to you, whatever. Um, so I want to talk about this verse, Matthew. I need you to have your Bible, iPhone, whatever, um, Android. Matthew 16, um, verse 19, and Matthew 18, verse 18. Remember, we're going to start really, really slow. We're going to build this foundation and all that type of stuff. Matthew, let's, let's do Matthew 18 first, right? Matthew 18, verse 18. So a lot of times you may have heard people when they pray say, um, you know, we bind the devil in the name of Jesus and we loose it. And, and you ever sit there and wonder, what do they mean? Anybody? I, I listen to people that pray. I, I ask questions in my heart because you got to listen to how people pray. The old saints used to pray like this when kids would be problematic. Mama would ask one of the old saints to pray and they'd be like, Lord, we pray that you would have them to do your will. And if they wouldn't do it, you would break their legs. I'm like, God, leave, break their legs. Jesus, I mean, what type of prayer are we praying? Uh, but it's important for, we t for us to know what it is we're saying so that our faith can be strong because we're not building it upon something that's not right. And so I know many of you have heard teachings on this. Just be open-minded and, and open your hearts and, and, and minds to this. Maybe new to you, old to some, good to see Clarence for the first time up in the balcony on my left. All right, so it goes like this, Matthew 16, Matthew 18, verse 18. It reads this. Now, Context is important. It says, verse 15, if your brother sins against you, tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother or sister. But if he doesn't listen to you, take one or two along with you that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. So this is Matthew teaching us how to handle disagreement in the church. 
if he refuses if he refuses to listen to them tell it to the church and if he refuses to listen to the church let him be to you as a Gentile as a tax collector so in essence what Matthew is saying is if a person in the church has a problem with somebody and you go up to him like hey you know I'm trying to try hey Daniel I'm trying to I'm trying to help out uh, this issue that we got and you're like ah, I want to hear it I want to hear it then it says all right, peace, bring two or three with you. You bring two or three and they're like, I, I ain't finna hear you. I don't wanna hear you. Then you bring them to church. The church like, hey man, I think you gotta calm down cause you getting a little too outrageous. And I don't care what you say, I'm gonna just do me. The church says at that moment, you could put them out. Now I know in the world that we live in, can you imagine putting somebody out from a biblical stance in today's world? They'll be all on social media talking about, that's why I don't go to church, because they be doing that type of stuff, but you ain't read your Bible. The Bible is pretty clear. If you are a problem and you don't want your problem resolved, the church has a right to say they don't want a fellowship with you anymore because you'll become cancer to the body. Now, verse 18, y'all saw that in the Bible, right? Verse 18, it says, Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Again, I say to you, if two or three are gathered about anything, they ask it, it will be done to them according to the Father. Wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Y'all heard that during prayer services. But the application of that is when it comes down to having an issue with someone who's in the church. That if two or three of us in the church start talking together and saying like, listen, this person's really a problem. And then someone say, no, nah, I think they're a pretty good pastor. And the other one say, no, nah, I think they're a problem. And the other one that said they were pretty good is like, no, nah, they're a real problem. And say, well, let's, let's just get rid of them from this fellowship because they're going to cause cancer to the whole body as opposed to doing everything for one. Let's bind them out and God will loose it in heaven. How many of you read that before? How many of you heard the verse, where if two or three are gathered in my name, I'll be there in the midst. But it's been, it's been given to prayer, which is true. The application of it is true, but the context of it is about church discipline. Right? So somebody, can you imagine, for real, for real, if you and I decide, yo, I got put out of TKC. What they do? Who are they? They just dirty like you. They got issues just like you. Nah, the Bible says that's what you do when you can't handle someone who's outrageous, who ratchet, who can't get the ratchetness out of them. That's, that's what it says, right? Okay, most conservatives will lean to this, but Matthew 16, y'all, is, is an interesting one. Matthew 16, Matthew 16, verse 18. Remember, I told you we're going to start off slow and we, we're going to get there. Matthew 16, praise team, you still here with me, okay? We, we're going to start off slow and we're going to get there. Okay, so now here it is. Now, good to see you, Nate. Uh, now, when Jesus came to Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they said, some say John the Baptist, Elijah, and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Pause. Jesus asked them the question, who are they saying I am in the streets? Because I don't know. See, some of you know too much about what they're saying about you, which means you ain't doing too much. Okay, y'all forget it. All right. He said, but who do you say I am? Simon Peter says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him and said, blessed are you, Simon, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed it to you, but my Father who is in heaven. I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock, the word rock is the word Petra, which sounds like Peter in the Greek. He says, I will build my church upon that revelation that this, you are the Christ. We're not building the church on Peter. We're building it on his revelation that you are the Christ. And he says this, um, and I tell you, Peter, and on this rock, I, build, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. It. And he says, I will give you, the word you there is plural in the Greek, even though it's singular here. I will give you, which means I will give you all, talking to the disciples, the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. 
Now, let me give you the actual translation on how that reads if you were just writing it verbatim. So I'm going to give you this, and then we're going we're gonna to we're gonna get to where we need to get to. And this is going to help you. So I want you to write that down because it is important. So it, Essence and says this, what you bind on earth must, they'll have it on screen, what you bind on earth must be already bound in heaven. And what you loose on earth must be what is already loosed in heaven. This is important. What you bind on earth must be already bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth must be what is already loose in heaven. The reason that is important, because that's the close translation to that verse, literally. Why is that important? Because it helps us understand that whatever we're trying to loose has already been done. Here's why it's important. Because if you misinterpret this verse, you will think that you have the power as a human to command deity, God, to do what you say. Which is very dangerous. Because if I feel like I have the power to command God to do what I say, how jacked up will my world be? Can you imagine if someone, if you really possess that type of anointing and you said, that person just cut me off on, on I-4. Father, I, I bind them in the name of Jesus and I pray you kill them. And we would be in chaos. But it says this, whenever we get together, whatever we bind, it's already got to have been done in the heavens. Now here's, here's what it's important. All right, let, let me get into this, this introduction because it's going to help a lot of us move forward in this and this helped me this week tremendously all right this is um, the church today should not understand and practice the teachings of Jesus differently than the church of the first century if it does then the authority of scripture is depreciated we have heard it many times, I bind and loose, and if you ever sat down and wonder what does that really mean, my assignment over these last weeks have been to roll back what we have heard, correct it, or expose you to a different thought of thinking as it relates to its interpretation. With things that have been said in church culture that may not match what he said or what he meant. Today, this will start off quite slow because we're trying to build a foundation, and then once it's built, put your seatbelts on because we're taking off. Remember again, prayer is Friday at 11 p.m., and this will help you get your pen, paper, notepad ready, and, and get this together. I want you to take a picture of this one because it's an important quote. It's written by R.C. Sproul. He's, he's gone to be with the Lord. It says this, sometimes immature Christians suffer bitter disappointment, not because God failed to keep his promises, but because well-meaning Christians made promises for God that God himself never authorized ah, that was so good sometimes the immature Christian suffers bitter disappointment not because God failed to keep his promises but because well-meaning Christians made promises for God that God himself never authorized all right let me give you an example Pastor, come pray for my daughter. She's sick. I get there in my anointing, and I say this, she's not going to die. I bind it in the name of Jesus. Three days later, she dies. You have two issues going on here. One, either the pastor lied, or two, either God lied. Let me give you a more practical example. I prophesy this is going to be the next president of the United States. Do you see how problematic that is? So either God lied, you didn't hear God, or he is the next president and we're all confused. So this is why it is important that when you and I interpret scripture, we do it properly because we could damage people's lives forever. This is why I'm so scared when they just let anybody go out there and preach a revival for them because they can get a live audience on social media without proper, no one would let you do surgery on them without properly knowing what you're doing. 
but we let people preach to us all day without knowing what they're talking about. I decree and declare that you're going to have the best day. You're like, well, who are you to decree and declare? If you got that type of power, go to the hospital and decree and declare that they're all healed. Oh, I get it. Your, your, your anointing only works when there's a crowd. Right? We, I, I am not against us prophetically declaring what we hope to see God happen in our future, but you must leave room for God to do whatever he desires to do. All right, here we go. So now, let, let me give you a backdrop, and then we're going we're gonna to ride. We're going to ride. So there were two schools of thought back in the day. There was two big dog preacher groups in the day of Scripture. There was the group called the Hallels, and then there was the group called the Shammai's. Them two, you either went to two of them. One of them told you about marriage, how to get divorced. One of them was a little more crafty. They were like, yo, if you want to get divorced, all she needed to do is not cook, and you could let her go. The other one was a little strict. Some of you are like, really, Pastor? Man, I didn't know. <clears throat> okay. But there were two different groups. And so they had a lot of influence over the day. And when Jesus uses the language binding and loosing for us, we read it and we're like, oh, wow, what does that mean? But they all knew what that meant because this two, these two groups had so much power they had the ability to bind situations on people, and they were the only ones who had the authority to loose them. That's what bad religion will do to you. It will determine your happiness, and it will determine your sadness. So when Jesus comes on the scene, they want to kill him because he's, he's ruining their hustle. Can you imagine every decision people had to make, they had to come to you to make it? Uh, Pastor, I want to get married. It's not your time. But I love them. It's not your time. Be single. Stay home and enjoy being single. <sighs> All right. No, I'm going to get married. I don't care what you say. Okay, your life is going to be a life of misery for the rest of your day. And people believe what was said because remember, when leaders talk, their words hold weight. Even if it's true or not, their words hold weight. So, so people are like, bruh, yo, you been to Rabbi Shammai? Yeah, man, he just told me that I, because I didn't follow the law properly, I got, I, I'm, I'm, I'm doomed. Bro, for real? Yeah, man. What is Shammai, the other group? I think I want to join them. Nah, they worse over there, bro. They caught me playing dominoes and they told me my whole life is going to be ruined because I played dominoes. Well, what about this? Man, they caught me playing spades. They, they told me I wasn't going to make it into heaven because I was playing spades. So now I can't even play spades. If you grew up in a traditional, traditional, traditional house like some of us, prom? God's not in prom? And you'd have their, they'd go to church and a religious leader would say, oh, don't let your kids go to prom because that's the devil. And then your parents come home, you can't go to prom because it's the devil. And now all of this bondage is being placed on this group because of the religious leaders that are leading them. And so here's where we get to. Jesus comes and says, hey, y'all, y'all been following this pattern of behavior which has been since the Old Testament, since Aaron's law where rabbis could bind and loose things for also legal purposes, because when there was legal issues, they would go to the rabbis. Okay, now let's, let's move a little faster. So binding simply means whatever you restrict or restrain, whatever you restrict or restrain, whatever you bind, whatever you restrict or restrain. So God isn't saying that if you see a demonic principality that you can necessarily bind it because Satan is only going to be bound when Jesus returns. You and I can do what James 4, 7 says. We can resist the devil. Number one, it doesn't say that. It says, number one, you need to submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Some of us are resisting the devil, but we forgot to submit to God. So you can't have any power over the enemy unless you first, what? Submit to God. When you submit to God, then you have the authority to resist the enemy. 
But a lot of us are trying to go in there. Some of us are trying to cast out demons and we never talk to God. So you cannot resist the evil if God doesn't even know you because you haven't submitted to him. Does that make sense? Okay. So let me, let, we're building the house. So we got the roof on. We're about to move into the house. So here's what Jesus is saying in Matthew 16. All of you represent me. Because you represent me, I'm going to give you keys. You got it? You don't, you don't need anybody else to be your key maker. Jesus is it. That's why it's important we represent somebody else greater than ourselves. So how you conduct yourself matters. If you go to the church, you represent the church. Don't be out there selling out and you represent the church. Because if you go to jail, they're going to pull your Facebook page, see my quote, and say you went to our church. And then they're going to interview me and say, did you know, boom, Quita, never met her a day in my life. Never. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just joking. So, so we represent, so, so Jesus says this, all right, here we go. Now, we're, we're about to, I, I need you to pay attention because it's, it's about to switch really quickly. So here it is. Jesus says this, I'm going to give you keys. These keys give you authority. They give you authority. Now, that doesn't mean because when you pray, like, now you're like, oh, snap, Pastor, now I can't bind Satan. No, you can still resist them. It's the same word, but the idea is this. Whatever you're binding in this earth has to have already been done in the heavens. Right? So I, I'm, if, if it's, it has nothing to do with saying that you can't cast demons out because that's exorcism. Right? We're not, we're, and a lot of us need exorcism. Because some of us have had things follow us through our bloodline or we've dabbled in things that we shouldn't have. Like some of you in dabble in witchcraft to figure out how your future's gonna be. And then you get, you run to these prophetic meetings and they lay hands on you and they transfer their demonic spirits because they don't know what the future holds but they went and consecrated their gift to the devil so the devil can give them insight and then they could give you insight into your future and they tell you things that sound familiar but it's not from God and then they pray for you and they infect in you their spirit so therefore they can control you and keep tabs on you and be able to tell you what you need to hear when you come back to them. But scripture is pretty clear. If you submit to God, resist the devil, submit to God, resist the devil, he will flee. He does not stay anywhere where the person is submitted to God. So God says to Peter, Peter, listen, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you these keys. These keys are powerful because when I give you these keys, that means that I'm going to allow you through the local church to legislate what you want to see here on the earth, okay? I want you to have what is happening in heaven to happen in the earth. Okay, so here, here's something that's very important. He says, whenever two or three are gathered in my name, there I'll be. So this word means this, very important, even a conservative, John MacArthur, as conservative as he is, says this. When two or three are gathered in his name means this. When two or three gather together and they make a sound or a symphony of noise, God is in the midst of them, which simply means this. God is already in our midst. God is omnipresent. He's always present. But the question is, is he participating? So we don't need to open up service and say, God, we, we invite you in. He's like, I'm already here. The question is, am I going to participate even though I'm already here? So a lot of us invite God in our house. God is in our house, but he's asking the question, do you want me to participate? Because I could be present and not participate in your life. And God, I want to give you, oh, that's a good part to stop because a lot of us have God present in our lives, but we're not asking God to participate in our lives. So God, be with me. He's like, I already am. No, God, don't just be with me. Participate with me. If I'm going to make a bad decision, I want you to cut it off. If I'm going to take the wrong door job, I want you to break it open. If this is not for me, I want you to let me know. If this person is not the right person to be around me, I want you to cut them off. Even if it hurts, even if it's out of nowhere, I want you to know. Because the weapons that we're fighting, they are not natural. They are spiritual. 
Y'all ready? Y'all got your seatbelts on? All right, we're about to go. We're about to go. So, so here it is. This is going to be very important. This is going to be very important. This is going to be very, very important. So what you bind on earth must be already bound in heaven, and what you loose on earth must be what is already loosed in heaven. So here is the thing. When Jesus came on the scene, and he says, whatever you bind, whatever you loose, it was a game changer. Because he was freeing them from the religion that they were in. These two groups were the big influential groups of their day. And Jesus comes and says, no, I'm going to give you all the keys. Because y'all been running to them because they've been saying they're the authority. No, they're not the authority. You got the keys now. You got the keys. Oh, that's going to help some of you. A lot of us are asking people, hey, can you pray for me? There's nothing wrong with asking for prayer. But let me tell you, you got the keys. There's not. Listen, I will tell you something. If you ask for prayer in the wrong spaces, people will shame you for asking for prayer. Well, what's wrong with you? Why do you need prayer? What's going on in your life that you would need prayer? What's going on with you spiritually that you would need prayer? God says, no, I know that prayer is important. I know it's important to ask people for prayer, but I want to let you know that that you have the keys to ask God for the authority of God to work in your life because you don't have to go through the groups anymore. You can go directly to me. All right, here we go. Matthew something 23 it is, says this, you got to bind the strong man to plunder his spoils. So I want to talk about this and land this plane home because this is one of the words that I heard. There's a thing in scripture, there's a thing in natural life and in scripture called word curses. All right, so first let me go back to Matthew 23. It says like, if you want to enter a strong man's house, you got to bind the strong man. Because all of the good things are in the house, but you can't get into the house because there's a strong man occupying the house. Here's what I want to lead you into. You and I need to learn how to bind the strong man. The strong man is the thing that's keeping you and I out of the fulfillment of God, keeping you and I out of the purpose of God, keeping you out of the destiny of God. It is a strong man that sits on the outside of the destiny of God's children, knowing that everything behind him is for you, but his or her assignment is to stop you from going forward in what God has for you. And word curses are very real and they're very true because there are many people who have, even in the Old Testament, you would see God correcting language about people speaking curses over people. And here's the reality. When we look in scripture, there's a woman who was having a child and she says, oh, this is the son of my sorrow. The spirit of God immediately corrects them through the father and says, no, you will not name my child that. You will name my child Benjamin, son of my right hand. Because word curses have an effect on people. And if we would be honest, some of you can remember some of the things your parents have spoken over your life and you 39 years old. And this is the part of binding that I want to talk to you about. Because whatever has been spoken over your life, there's a word that counters it in God's word. And that is why I can, I can say through scripture is that you can bind whatever's been spoken against you negatively and the heavens will begin to loose you into the fulfillment of God's purpose for your life. Do you know how many people have spoken negatively? Oh, just because you didn't hear it, just because you didn't feel it, and some of you are feeling it and don't know why you're feeling it, it's because there are word curses spoken over God's children, and there are word curses spoken over God's people, and there's some of you that can't love properly because of that. There's some of you that can't enjoy life because of it, and some of you don't even have a clue why you are the way you are, and it's because some of the things that have been spoken over your life. And I know they said sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Well, if that was the case, why would God spend a lot of his time reversing words that have been declared throughout the Old Testament and new. 
And so we need to bind the strong man. Do you know how many people, when you get to a position of influence, power, whatever you want to call it, there are people who speak words over your life and they declare and they decree that your life will go a certain way, that your, your things will be ruined, that things will be negative. And you may just go on your day and never even think about it because you didn't hear it, but you need to be spiritual to understand that some of the things that are being spoken over your life are affecting your life because they're strong men or women that are affecting you from entering into spaces that you're supposed to enter into. You always be an alcoholic, you always be a drug, you always be this, you always be that. And those words hold weight. Words hold weight. They hold weight. How do you get the glory of God to come in? You give God words. You tell God, I love you. I appreciate you. I value those words hold weight. So if they hold weight to get God to come to you, how much weight will the enemy use it to affect your destiny? And some of us as parents have said things over our children because they made us mad or they made us upset. And we need to bind those things as well. Father, I bind the words that I have spoken in my anger in my frustration and God I pray that you would loose my children because it is so in the heavens and here it is very important y'all God's spirit has given you the keys to do it yourself you know what's crazy is to be locked out of a house and you banging on the door and you mad because you can't get in and you got keys to get in but you ain't use your keys you waiting on triple a to come give you keys that you already got i don't want to raise a church that you got to depend upon the pastor because the pastor may be taking a selfie and may not get back to you on time the pastor may be driving his car and may not respond to you on time but you got to learn how to bind the things that are against you and if you if you don't believe there are people speaking against your life speaking against your children keep living a little while longer because it happens and people's lives are detrimented and affected because they don't know how to bind the strong man and how many of you have low self-esteem because a word was spoken over your life it's been so many years and you get all them likes online and it does nothing to your soul because the word curse is still operating in your heart because there is an authority when the reason why they want to keep Jesus out of the mix is because he liberated the captive. It was one lady, I forgot who it is, she said, I could help them if they all knew they were slaves. Well, the reality was we are all slaves and the power of God to be able to give us the authority because it's already done in the heavens. That God loosed us when he died on Calvary that God gave us freedom when he died on Calvary, that we have access to that freedom because he did it in Calvary. And there are things that you are seeing that you don't like that you're seeing. I'm not saying that you can change every single thing, but I am saying there is an authority within you. As much as you admire other people to do it for you, you should be admiring the keys and not the person. So I want to challenge many of you, even in this moment, to bind those things that have been spoken negatively over you, over your children. We live in a world that's really sick. If they can't get to you, they're getting to your children. No, no, I know y'all y'all sleeping and y'all just think it is what it is. No, if they can't get to you, they will get to your children because if they get your children, they got you. If they can't get your parents, if they can't get to you, they'll get to your siblings because if they get to your siblings, they got you. And that's why it's not just about you. It's about your spiritual influence that you make up. It's about your natural family. It's about all of that. That's why we declare the word of the Lord over people. That's why there's a benediction in service. The reason there's a benediction in service was because it was to speak, a if that wasn't important, then why would God give it to us in scripture? Because God wanted to speak a blessing over his children. And Jews, when their children become 12 years old, they speak a blessing over their children. 
because they understand the power of words. Proverbs says it this way, there is life in death in your tongue. 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 And some of you have been desperate to hear something from someone you care about. And God is saying, no, I know you didn't get it naturally, but God can give it to you spiritually. I know you didn't get it naturally, but God can give it to you spiritually. Whatever you're missing naturally, God can give you spiritually. How many believe that? No, how many believe that? Whether you're online, if you believe that, somebody say, I believe that. Because whatever you're missing in the natural, God can give you in the spirit. Whatever you're missing in the natural, God can give you in the spirit. Whatever you're missing in the natural, God can give you in the spirit. Whatever you're missing in the natural, God can give you in the spirit. And some of you will never be free until you recognize there's a strong man stopping me from being who I'm supposed to be, from loving the way I'm supposed to love. I know you got mama issues I know you got daddy issues but let's not just deal with that let's deal with the word curses that were spoken over your life that you have not yet to get over and your mama died your father died and they never got to bless you they never got to reverse it and even though they're gone or someone that you cared about spoken over your life and now you cannot go forward because every time you try to go forward that word that was spoken over your life always comes up and always lets you know that you're always going to be a failure and you don't want to go after what God said even though you know it's what God said but them word curses have the authority to keep you bound and to keep you captive well today I want to introduce to many of you for the first time or for the second time that you got keys baby you don't have to worry about anybody else you got authority in the name of the Lord God and today I decree by the power of the Holy Spirit that you would receive the keys that would give you the freedom that you need that upon this rock this revelation that Jesus is the Christ you are able to build your house and the gates of hell will not prevail against it they can say what they say they can do what they do but I am a child of God I am seated in heavenly places we come against every word that was spoken over your life that was spoken over your destiny that was spoken over your purpose and father bind the strong man bind the strong man whether he stays at my house whether he's outside my apartment bind the strong man let every word that's been spoken fall to the ground let every idle word fall to the ground in the name of Jesus Father, we lift it up in the name of Jesus. Every negative word that's been spoken over our destiny, every negative word spoken over our future, every negative word spoken over our path, and we ask you, Lord, to do what only you can do. Fix it, Jesus. We ask you to clear the crooked paths and make them straight in the name of the Lord. We ask you that you protect our seed, and we bind every word that's been spoken over our seed negatively in the name of Jesus. We ask you that you do what only you can do. You are a God that reverses the curse and when you die you reverse the curse and so help us not live under something that's been crucified to the cross so we bind every strong man 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 every word every word every word every word every word spoken against your destiny every word spoken against your office in the name of Jesus you will do better than the former you will do more than the former you will do more than the former you will do more than the former we will do more than the former and scripture says whenever two or three are gathered in my name and make a sound I am there in the midst of them I know you got masks on but would you make a sound even in your home even in the sanctuary that God is Woo. Don give me a lot more monitor spiritual 
wherever two or three are, I'm participating. Woo! I'm participating. I'm participating. I'm participating. Father, I pray for our state attorney in the name of Jesus. Every word that's been negatively spoken over their lives, over their family, over their children, we block it in the name of Jesus. Not by our authority, but by the Spirit of God. You will do more. You, we plead a hedge of protection around you as you travel, as you go. In the name of Jesus, we pray that you'll cover her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. That you'll cover her children. That you'll cover her husband. In the name of the Lord, we come against every plan every diabolical plan every satanic plan every witchcraft plan that will try to stop the systems so here it is Don, a little bit more monitor here's the thing when I said last week you go into the world and you affect change when you start going after the world systems, you invite the strong man. When you start trying to tamper with what the world has set up so they can feed their coffers, when you start doing what Jesus did to Shammai and Hillel and the Pharisees, you get crucified because you're stopping what they make as profit. Can y'all give me five more minutes? authority they have power and I believe some of you are challenged has nothing to do with your education has everything of what you heard so I want you to do I know it is kind of taboo but I want you to do this for the next 30 days I want you to decree the word of God over your life you got to find Word. I, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. My, everybody knows kind of some people know my story, some people don't. My, 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 my sister, she's, she's saved, just amazing, intelligent, but she, she got these, these demonic issues with that fight, addiction, and sometimes as, as a person, you just kind of don't want to deal with it. You just kind of want to just this not even deal with it, but even in this message, I felt real convicted to find her and speak the word of God over her. Because there are strongholds that hold you. Woo! There are strongholds that hold you because words that have been spoken over your life and God has given you the keys not to run from things that don't bring you pleasure but to run to things that bring you displeasure and speak the word of God over their life. And some of them cannot function, not because they don't want to function, but because they have so much strong negative words that have been deposited over their soul. And Father, I pray that you would give us all an anointing that helps us destroy yokes that have been spoken over our lives and over our children lives and things that affect us even though we are grown and they still hold us captive we break those words off of our lives in the name of Jesus I know
Man, there's some words that are so strong. And if it's ever spoken over you, it never leaves your life. I'll never forget a man told me that I really respected. Yeah, I pray to God that you sell nothing but newspapers for the rest of your life. I'm 36 years old. I've accomplished more than most people have in their lifetime. I didn't say that to clap. I just simply said this. I still remember those words. And when I was studying this message, God was like, no, it's not just, it's not just about them. There are words that still inhibit you and that you don't recognize. There are some things that drive me. And the reason they drive me is because in my heart, I say, I will never sell newspapers in my life. I will never go back that far in my life. And those words drive you. And I plead the blood of Jesus over your mind, over the things that you have not told anybody, over the things that you have not spoken to anybody. And some of the people that that spoken to you they can't help you even if you go back to them and ask them to retrieve what they said they're so wicked and evil they would never take it back but you gotta go to God and say God break every influence break every yoke break everything that would try to stop the purpose and the plan of God for my life I know mama was divorced I know daddy was divorced and I know you're in fear thinking that it's going to happen to you but we bind the strong man and we say in the name of Jesus you shall be everything God has called you to be you shall do everything God has called you to do you shall have everything God has called you to have we buy the strong man I know we can't touch people, or we shouldn't touch people. No, I'll pray for you. Man, I just see so many pictures. I, I want to say this. What a natural man never told you. What a natural man may have never said to you. may not even be skill. It may be a lack of affirmation. And I want you to decree God's word over you for the next 30 days with all of us. Because there's a level of freedom that you will walk in once you get the affirmation. The affirmation will never come from people because if you live for people, when they're silent, you'll die when they're silent. When we started this church, there were people who had, did prayer services of cursings and all that type of stuff. And people do all crazy types of stuff now. They kill birds in front of the church. They, they cut different types of stuff and leave them in front of the space and this, this is why it's so important to, to cling on to God because the reality of it is this. Daily people are throwing darts that you don't even know. And you and I cannot ride off of an emotional experience with God. It must be a daily decision to submit to God Resist the devil, he will flee. Today I pray you bind the strong man. I pray you bind the strong man. Some of you are killing the strong man. He thought he'd hold you captive to who you were. 
He thought he'd hold you captive to the prison of what happened to you. But you've been binding him. But here's my word to you. Just because you have him bound, don't think he'll stay bound. He's a liar and a deceiver. He'll make you think he's bound and all of a sudden escape when you're not looking. Keep your eyes on who you got bound because they're always looking for another opportunity to come back into the house. Once you got them out the house, keep your eye on them so they don't come back in the house. Bind the strong man and keep them bound. Don't lose him for one moment. Don't lose him for one second. Don't lose him for one minute because if you lose him, he will run and try to come back into the house. If you're buying the strong man, keep your eye on him and keep him bound. Father, I've spoken the word that I believe is of the Lord. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would honor that word. You would help us bind the strong man. That you would help us bind the strong man. Help us speak life over our children over this next 30 days. Speak you're the head and not the tail. Woo. We speak to Dexter. When you come out, you're a man of God. You're going to do the work of the Lord. You're going to find a job. It doesn't matter what's held against you. God's going to open up the door, which no man can shut in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus, every negative word that was spoken over your mama by your mama, yeah, that was spoken over your mama, and you and your mama don't get along. I know it. And you and your mama don't get along today. You will never get an apology from her. You will never get it. But I speak to your strong man, and we bind him up now in the name of Jesus. You will be able to do everything that God has put in your path to do. Respite every word that's been spoken against you negatively. You will do it in every word that may have been spoken over your life from your family because of your achievements. We pray that you will see success in the name of the Lord, that you will walk in success in the name of the Lord. Everything that you put your hands to, it shall prosper. Everything, I feel the Holy Spirit, everything you put your hands to, it shall prosper. Everything, all the things, all the things the Lord is doing in your life, every negative word that they spoke about you shall be, it shall be, it shall not work, it shall not succeed in the name of Jesus. Everything, every plot, every backstabbing word that they said, it shall not come to pass. Every family member that you thought you can trust but decided to go against you, we come against it in the name of Jesus. Raise up the spirit of the living God. Send ministering angels now. Dispatch them in the name of Jesus to minister to areas that we have uncovered. Minister to mothers. Minister to children those that are bound by alcohol we pray in the name of Jesus that you would loose them Holy Spirit that you would loose them that you would liberate them those that have psychiatric issues father I pray that they may have issues from words that have been spoken over their mind those that are watching online in the name of Jesus I pray that you'll give them the authority to rise up against everything that would try to condemn them in the name of the Lord Help us to bind the strong man. Help us to overcome the strong man. Help him or her not to have dominion or authority over our lives in the name of Jesus. your baby girl who came to the altar. Father, every word that's been spoken over her life. Every negative word that's been spoken as a child that affects her adulthood, that affects her wifehood, that affects her motherhood. Father, I pray you'll start to break them off of her life now in the name of Jesus. 
She got to be a mother. She don't have time to worry about those words that have been spoken over her life. I pray, Holy Spirit, you'll begin to fight those words that come to her mind. I pray you'll begin to fight those words that come to her soul. I pray you'll begin to fight them words that come to her heart in the name of Jesus. I'll even pray for you, Wilkins, that every word that's been spoken negatively against you, that everything that causes you to be upset and you don't know where they come from, I bind the strong man, the strong man that will try to lock you up and make you get so angry that you lose your marriage and you lose your children we bind the strong man and we tell him to go in the name of Jesus father I pray by the unction of the Holy Ghost that you would anoint us with the keys to unlock everything that would try to lock us up everything that they said everything that they decreed every seance every plan of the enemy every witchcraft that they would lie at our feet I pray you'll break it up now in the name of Jesus every curse every word curse every word curse every word curse everything that couldn't get to mama but trying to get to us everything that couldn't get to daddy but trying to get to us I pray you'll break it now in the name of Jesus from everything that came after your mother and trying to come after you we bind the strong man now in the name of Jesus he has no authority he takes no inch in the name of the Lord raise up intercessor you said wherever two or three are gathered in my name, you would be there. And we are gathered today in your name. Father, I, I don't know what it is. Father, I pray for G Paul's two girls. I don't even know who they are. I just see two girls. Holy Spirit, over these holidays. of relationship. Spirit of God, help us bind the strong man. successfully bound the strong man. You become more than your father would ever dream of becoming. Keep your eye on the strong man. You've been a father when you were fatherless. You've done what a rule book has not even taught you eye on the strong man. Oof. Mighty God. And seek to kill, steal, and destroy. Father, we decree the word of God over our lives. Even if you don't know how to decree it, like Pastor, what do I say? Just email one of the pastors and we'll send you something or email our inbox and we'll give you something. Just speak the word. Yeah, speak the word. Shoot, I'm out of time. Speak the word. You're going to love again. Your hurdle's been words. It 
ain't got nothing to do with nothing now. I, I see it. It's got words. Give us the grace. Give us the understanding. Oof. Thank you, God. Even if you're watching online, I pray you feel the presence of God, even in your home. Decree that over your life the next 30 days, uh, the word of the Lord. Decree it over your heart, decree it over your soul. Bind the strong man. Bind the strong man.